Hello, I'm Jason King, and welcome to my channel about digital advertising for nonprofits, where I'll be giving you practical advice about how charities can use Google Ads, and in particular, their Google Ad grants. Uh, today, this will be a bite-sized session, so let's talk about why you need to keep an eye on the search terms that trigger your ads and when to use negative keywords. This advice is going to help you put your ads in front of the right people, not the wrong people, and avoid wasting your valuable ad grant spend. So, I've been working on the account of an international wildlife conservation charity. They are trying to protect endangered species. Their website has a landing page for each animal. In Google Ad Grants, we mirror this. We have a separate campaign for each of those landing pages. And within each campaign, we have several ad grants about different aspects of that animal. So for example, within a campaign uh, to save tigers, we'll, we'll have an ad group for um, keywords related to saving tigers, a separate ad group for keywords relating to protecting tigers, and another ad group for keywords related to tiger conservation and charities. Now this particular charity is extremely lucky to have an Ad Grants Pro account. The Grants Pro account, uh, program was discontinued a couple of years ago, but it used to be a way for a nonprofit to get a bigger Ad Grant allowance, provided they could consistently maximize the usual daily budget. Although they're not taking new applications and this program is effectively closed, some charities still have that increased amount. So this charity has four times the usual $329 to spend per day, and that goes a long way. And they maximize that, using that full amount most weekdays. In my experience, this is very unusual. Of course, this is free in-kind advertising. It's a donation of advertising spend by Google. But even so, this charity doesn't want to waste this valuable asset. They want to target that spend as effectively as possible and squeeze the most value from it. So that's why we choose keywords carefully to target people who are likely to convert, in other words, to um, donate or to sign up for a newsletter. And that's why we also use negative keywords to try to exclude people who are searching for less relevant topics or might have less relevant interests to us. So let's take a look at an example. Here, I'm logged into Google Ads and I'm looking at the search terms for a specific campaign. I recommend you check this particular screen regularly because this, this is how you're going to find out the actual words and phrases that people who clicked on your ads uh, typed into their search. And you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised at how many people searching Google cannot spell and at how often irrelevant searches are triggering your ads to be shown and wasting your budget. Now, if this was a paid account, that would be doubly important. This would be your real life spend. But even if it's an ad grant, this is still a precious um, budget that you don't want to waste. So we're running an ad campaign to get website visits from people searching for topics around wolves. Wolf conservation, save the wolf, wolf habitat, and wolf charities. The aim of this campaign is most definitely not to attract people searching for werewolf facts, facts about werewolves. Um, whilst the werewolf may indeed be an endangered species, I've never seen one. That's not our charity's mission. Now here are a few other examples I found on the same account. Um, we have a campaign seeking for donations to save pangolins from being trafficked. Um, I've seen the search term where to buy a pangolin not something we're encouraging. Um, in a campaign to protect rare ducks from having their eggs stolen, um, a quite common um, search term we saw was how to poach a duck egg. So it should be clear by now that context is a big problem with Google Ads. Your charity is trying to save endangered species, but your visitors are really looking for duck egg recipes, tips on trafficking rare animals, and solid facts about the wolfman. So here's what you should do. Add those less relevant keywords as negative keywords, and in future, you won't get similarly irrelevant traffic. This is how you add a negative keyword. 
uh, from the search terms report, you could tick um, a keyword about facts about werewolves, for example. You could tick as many keywords as you think are irrelevant, and you can add them as a negative keyword by clicking on this link above. And when you do this, you can add it at the ad group level, the campaign level, uh, or you can add it to a negative keyword list, which is a way that you can create a list that you use throughout your account. Uh, in this case, I, I would probably add it at the campaign level because the entire campaign is about wolves, not werewolves. Um, and I could add this very specific exact keyword, but I'm going to say that I'm not interested in people looking at wells in any context and simply add the word. I could have done it this way. I could click on the negative keywords option on the menu and add it through there too. But that's not all we can do. What about the most useful search terms? Um, what if we could check this list of search terms and find out the particular phrases tend to convert more often than others? Uh, what if they lead to higher donation amounts? What if they get a particularly high click-through rate? These useful search terms uh, could be added as keywords to your ad groups. So let's take a look at a campaign to save declining bee populations. Now, at a glance, most of the search terms here do look relevant, certainly more relevant than the ones in the wolf campaign. Uh, you can even here see which keyword triggered the ad to be shown. Um, so I'm seeing keywords like protect bees um, and, and, and people actually did type in protect bees. Um, the keyword bee conservation, somebody uh, searched for conservation of bees. Um, that same keyword um, led to somebody clicking donate to bee charity. Well, that sounds extremely relevant. These sound good. But what if we just filter for the most useful ones? Um, there's a filtering tool built into Google Ads that's extremely useful. So first thing to do when we're filtering is make sure we've got a decent uh, date range. So let's take a look. Uh, we're looking at three months worth of data, 8th of January to 8th of March. That should be enough. Uh, never make big decisions based on too little data. Let's filter. And there's many things we could filter for. I could find um, which search terms have had the highest click-through rate, but I want to find the ones that have converted. So every keyword that has converted, um, so I can just say more than zero. Here we go. We find that four keywords only in the last three months have converted in this particular campaign. Two of them, it's saying here, we have already added or are already in that um, ad group. So we don't need to do anything with those. But there are two others here. Let's look at those. Donate to Bee Charity and Save the Bees Charity. They're very relevant. They're exactly the kind of people that we want to be coming to the website. Potential donors, uh, possibly. Um, and one of them, as I can see from the column on the far right, that's the conversion value column. One of them has made a donation of £64.45. Fantastic. So I'm going to add both of these not this time as a negative keyword, but as a keyword. So these will be added to that specific ad group and with any luck, uh, lead to future interactions, future donations. Don't automatically add every search term in your filtered list, um, even if they are ones that convert. Apply some common sense to this first. For example, does that particular search term actually belong in that particular ad group? Or does it belong elsewhere? In a different ad group, perhaps. Uh, don't add terms that are too generic and vague or could be used in multiple contexts. They may have converted once, but um, they might not be uh, particularly relevant over time. Um, don't add search terms if they're a competitor charity's brand or someone's trademark. Uh, don't add single word keywords. Uh, you'd have to check the ad grants policy about that first. 
Uh, most single word keywords are not allowed with some exceptions like your brand name and medical terms. On the wildlife conservation account, I spotted a lot of people searching for the words facts and information about endangered species. They're searching for rhino facts, tiger information, duck facts, and so on. Um, I wondered whether this was useful. Um, this might be um, often uh, students uh, doing projects, um, this people doing a trivia quiz. Um, I had a feeling that these are not people who are likely to be a donor or a supporter of the charity. Um, in which case, it might be a good idea to exclude those visits so that we can use the um, budget to focus on more useful visitors. So I added the words facts and the word information as negative keywords. Um, I'm not quite sure what will happen next. It might actually lead to a huge reduction in, in the daily spend, or it might be that it enables more useful uh, visits to the website to have more productive visits. And that is a decision I made because we are focused on donations and on signups for their newsletter. If I consider this account to be purely raising awareness, it would have been fine to allow um, these perhaps less interactive visits to the site. Here's another use for the search terms list. Do you ever wonder how much of your traffic or your donation revenue comes from people searching for your brand name? You can find out by using the search terms report. Um, filter it by search term um, and you'll have the option um, to filter for only search terms containing a particular word. Uh, you type in your brand name and if you have an acronym, if you have a different, a different form of it, try each of those in turn and you will be able to compare the filtered report with the account as a whole by just scrolling down and looking at the bottom of the, of the filtered list of search terms. Uh, you are likely to see a much higher conversion rate, you're likely to see a much higher click-through rate. Um, it's a very good idea, by the way, to bid on brand terms. I've known some people think it's a bit of a waste of your spend, waste of your money to actually do that, but it isn't. Um, it raises your click-through rate, it, it generally ra um, raises your account's metrics, but also it means you're a little bit of in control of um, the messaging um, in Google search results and you take up more of that search results screen. I hope you found this advice useful. That's all I have for today. Please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below if there are any topics you'd like me to cover in a future video. Uh, in the description below I will add links to uh, Google Ads support pages where you can learn more about search terms and negative keywords. Uh, I'll also add links about the Product Experts program which I belong to and the Ad Grant Certified Professionals program um, which is, will give you a directory of Ad Grants consultants, freelancers, agencies who specialise uh, and have been checked out for their ability to run Ad Grants accounts. Um, finally, I'd like to give a shout out for the Nonprofit Technology Conference, which takes place from the 23rd to the 26th of March in Baltimore. I'll be there, and so, so will the Google Ad Grants team, plus a number of other Ad Grants certified professionals from various agencies. I'll also be presenting a session there alongside the head of the Ad Grants program. Grab a ticket, register while you still can, and I'll put a link in the uh, description below. Thank you for watching. Um, hope to see you on another video. Bye.